I can't remember exactly how old I was. I would have been about eight or nine. It was a book that my stepmother read to us, me and my brother. I think it was one of the books that I was devouring in kind of huge quantities at the time. It made a huge impression on me because some years later, when I was a teacher myself, a primary teacher in my early 20s, it was one of the first books that I read to the children in my class, and they loved it too. And I read it straight away, and I absolutely loved it. Emily and the Detectives was introduced to me uh, by our teacher, Miss Goodall, when I was at school, and we were utterly gripped by it. It's about a little boy who lives with his mum, and she has worked very, very hard to save up seven pounds and he's going in the school holidays to see his granny. And she gives him this seven pounds. She's very worried about him going to Berlin. He says bye-bye to his mum, and he gets on the train. And all the time he's feeling in his pocket for the money in an envelope. And all the time he's worried that he's gonna, it's not gonna get stolen. And he mustn't fall asleep, but he does fall asleep. He falls asleep and has a nightmare. He has a terrible nightmare that's, if you like, fed to him. Uh, in part by some of the strange things that a man in the corner with a bowler hat um, has said to him. And when he wakes up, he discovers that the seven pounds has been taken and there's only one person who could have taken it and that was the bowler hatted man. And he gets off the train, the station earlier, and he's incredibly brave. He leaps into a taxi and he goes off in search of the villain. And by doing this, he encounters a whole group of boys who all get together to capture the bowler hatted man. For a book that has a lot of plot and a lot of action, you might think maybe it's, it's not a book that's really about character. But in fact, it's done with a very light touch. We keep getting these little glimpses of people. So there's the character of Little Tuesday, for example, or the character of the professor and Gustav. And then there's Pony, the one girl, who is Emil's cousin with her sparkling new bike. And that's something that a lot of people who read the book as children remember very vividly, is, is this new bike that she has. Emil's an odd character in that he's very good. He feels he has to look after his mother in a way that many children of that age don't because they're, they're looked after themselves. Their function is to run about and get dirty and be noisy nuisances. But Emil has a sort of more grown-up attitude to it than that. One of the most exciting things about the book and something that people remember from reading it or from the illustrations or from any of the film versions is the moment when every child in the city chases the thief because the adults aren't listening it's only the children who can solve this it's not somebody with superpowers who comes in and solves the mystery it's not um, a grown-up with a police uniform or, or a, you know, a gun or anything like that it's children working together to solve the crime and to punish the or, or to capture the the, the, the criminal the, the kind of realist children's fiction um, of that kind set in a city you know the city as part of children's lives was it was certainly not that common in British children's literature and and this was something very new and exciting um, and especially when the new puffin translation came out so we've got to think Harry Potter of the 1960s <laughs> Thinking about how the book would work on stage, one of the discussions with people was how do you do something on that scale? When I approached the National and they said they thought it could work here, it finally seemed possible to think of doing the story on the scale that I think it deserves. I think as we've worked on it, we've found more and more why it's one of those classic books that really does come alive for different generations now nearly 100 years after it was written.